Hello everyone. It's time for the electrics. Right, so now that the cabling is fed from the bonnet, I've just tied it up there, fed it underneath this black thing here, taped it together, it pops out there, ready to go underneath the seat. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now. And yeah, end of video. As you can see, all the floor is prepped. Right, so now that the floor is all prepped, I can concentrate on the first fix electrics as well as getting the carpeting done to the walls. So today I'm going to concentrate on getting the holes cut out for the spotlights. So I'm going to have six of those which require a 54mm diameter hole cutting out, which I bought a special bimetal hole cutter, 54mm diameter. So that's hopefully going to do the job. However, I have been warned that there are existing wiring looms in the places that I'm going to cut. And to be very careful, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm very good at this, so yeah, yeah, knock it out of the park. Right, if you want to place a bet, this is a good time to do it because I can tell you the odds are good. The odds are good that I'm going to fail. <laughs> no, we're not. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to crack this thing. Right, so where are they going, you ask? So I will show you. So I can, I've put these hooks in the locations that they're going to go along the, it's going to be one there. They're about 65 centimetres different, so I'm going to have four along there. So I need to cut the holes out of that metal work, which is from the pop top. Not looking forward to that. And on this side, because we've got the kitchen going somewhere here, I don't want spotlights above, because we're going to probably have a strip light or something, and I'm going to have a shelf there, so I don't really need spotlights there. So we're just going to have the two, one there, and one there on that side. So it's six in total. Right, let's crack on. So these are the lights that I've gone for. Dimmer tech, so I can dim them, they require a 54mm hole to be cut. So they're just going to go up there like that, somewhere like that. I've already got my little marker. Right, so I've been warned that there are some existing wiring looms above where I need to cut. So I need to lift the pop top up so I can see above where I'm going to be cutting. But also, this thing here, what I've been told is to put some tape around there, quite close to the edge, just so when I do go through the metal, hopefully it doesn't just go straight through like that. That bit of tape will help stop it. We shall see. Let's give it a go, Mush. I'll speed this up for dramatic effect. How's my concentration face? Right, so I'm hoping that's enough, can you see? Just try to make it a little bit thicker. So when it goes through past the teeth, it should just jam a little bit. But anyway, if this series so far has taught me anything is to practice first. So I'm going to cut a hole through a baking tray. Yeah, Carla's not going to be happy. Let's go test it. I was hoping I would see where I meant to screw, but drill, but I don't. Doesn't help at all. It's all solid. So I'm none the wiser, I didn't really need to lift this up. Bagger. Hey boy. Right, so I drilled a pilot hole and we tent the first hole. Wrap this with insulation tape to give me a stopper, about a millimetre down. Hopefully that works, wish me luck. I do not enjoy cutting metal. We're almost there. I did it. One hole cut out. Yeah, I'm glad I put the sheet down because there's a lot of fire lines come off. I did not enjoy that. Yeesh. Yeah. yeah, not too bad. Seven years now. A few moments later. Another piece done. No wiring there, so that's good news. Scary stuff. No, I'm not going to click it in because I don't think it'll click out, but that's the hole there. That pushes in. Those little clips there. And jobs are good. That oh, was pretty close. Look at that. Look how close I was to those wires. Number three done. I'll put these sheets up because I need to protect the van from all these filings because there's like thousands of them. I don't want it to rust the van. What are these called? For um, those reed diffusers. Reed diffusers. Yeah. yeah, so I've stolen one of Carl's reed diffuser things. Oh, they were expensive to buy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. So hopefully I can put 
put it through this hole. I might have to do the other one anyway. So, okay. And just to sort of see if there's all immediately in the way, like these wires. Can't seem to feel or it doesn't get jammed, so I'm happy enough to put the next piece in. Locked and loaded. All looking good? Yeah, and no wires. No wires in the way. Yeah. Oh my word. Four down, two to go. It's looking like a van now. It's just looking like a van, it doesn't make any difference. It's just little holes. Yeah, but they look like they've got lights in, even though they aren't. <laughs> they look like the camper van lights on there. Yes, everywhere. Just check my ass crack. <laughs> For once, it's actually growing according to plan, but I think I've just jinxed it. Probably should have waited, you know. I don't know. But no, it feels good once you get it. Once stuff actually starts going right, it feels good. Not like the carpeting yet. I know, but I've cut soon. holes out of metal. I think that's a bigger deal. You're very proud of yourself. I'm very proud of myself, yeah. Oh, I'm very proud of you too. You're <laughs> Doing? Filing all the edges down so I don't cut myself when I put the lights in there. Right? They're all done now. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Are you pleased? So I've got to say, I am pretty damn chuffed with myself. Everything went right. Hopefully, I've cut them in the right place, but where I was meant to cut, cut well. So, yeah. See, so yeah, it's just these little bits, if you can see. So, all is good in the hood. Are you filming me? Yeah. Yeah, but also we're putting cables in here so we don't want anything to snag and cut the cables. So, just filing it down. I'm going to put the cables in conduit, but... Can't be too safe. Right, that's it. Finito! So, what's the next job then? So the next job is to... Well, I'm thinking, I don't even know if I'll do this today or if I'll do it another time, but... Start doing the first fixed wiring, so I'm going to have fuse box down there so all these lights are going to get connected together in parallel I believe then we're going to have a switch somewhere here or in this vicinity cable to the switch then switch to each of the lights but I'm going to go that way through there and up in here and then carry it on to go along the back here through here through there again to this light through underneath there to that light and so on and so on and potentially put a second switch at the end so when we come in we've got another switch so yeah let's see how we get on with that what's that from i must have had an allergic reaction to the metal filings or something oh when i've rubbed goodness. myself down i've just got a rash wall wounds <laughs> That was a bit of a chew, but I finally got the matting back in. Right, so now that the matting's down, I can put the base, the base for the front seat back in place, so then I can start putting the battery in, all the other stuff. Yeah, let's get cracking. Seven years, this boat, and we all know where we belong, just wait. Jobs are good and cables successfully fed through. Spotlight holes successfully cut out. I am having a good day for once. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the living room. So now that we've got the cable fed from the engine bay to underneath the driver's seat, as well as the, la the holes cut out for the lights, we now need to figure out where all this stuff goes. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you what we've bought where we think it's going to go and yeah if you can think that we've missed something or we're doing it wrong please let us know in the comments also Al Alfie is up there he's going to give us a hand in a minute don't know what he's going to do but yeah right so let's get started so the first thing is the battery this is the leisure battery which is a 110 amp, amp hour AGM battery from Leoc um, we're going to have two methods of charging that the first being this Victron DC to DC charger 
battery to battery charger. It's a non-isolated version, which means it's got an in and two outs, whereas the isolated version will have two outs and two ins. So that's just because our van can be earthed to the chassis. So check to see which one you need for your van. And then the second way we're gonna charge it is via this Victron Blue Smart Charger, which is going to go from the main supply on a campsite or at your home or whatever, via this consumer unit. And then we're gonna to have to buy a plug socket to plug this in because it's got a regular plug on the end. And then we can charge it while we're at the campsite. So we can charge it on the move with that one, on the campsite with that one. And then eventually we're probably gonna do a solar panel as well, but we haven't bought anything like that yet. But I'll probably run the cables for it anyway. So that's the charging methods. We've also got this Victrum battery protect. That's just to protect the battery. It'll monitor it and make sure that everything's running properly. I don't even know where that goes, but I'll figure it out. So in terms of the lights, I've gone for these Dimatech down lights, which are just warm white. They don't change color or anything like that, but they allow us to dim them. And we've bought this dimmer switch to go with it. So in terms of switches, we've got the dimmer switch. We've got two other switches, which we're going to use for the top of the kitchen and underneath the seats. So we're gonna have three sets of lights. Then we've got two USB chargers and two UK plugs. We've also got some little switches, which I might just dot around so we can turn the lights off when we're asleep or in bed. Right, so all those are gonna be fed into this, which I've forgotten what it's called. Fuse box. Fuse box, well done. It's Carla, my beautiful assistant. <laughs> so they're all gonna be fed into this fuse box using this 1.5 millimeter cable, which is, I think it's rated for 21 amps. It's 30 meter roll there. So that's for the lights and switches and plugs. And we've also got some conduit, which I'm gonna put that through so it doesn't get snagged inside the van. Also got a couple of 60 amp fuses. That's for to go from the driving bay battery to the battery to battery charger. And then a couple of others are dotted around, but I don't know where they go, but I'll figure that out, figure that out. I think that's it for now. So that's an overview of what we've bought and where we think it's going to, oh, I even said where it's going to go. Oh no, I didn't say where any of this stuff is going to go. I meant to say where it's going to go. Right, in terms of where these things are going to go, this is going to go underneath the driver's seat as it fits perfectly underneath there, along with the DC to DC charger, that's also going to go under there, as is the battery connect, uh, battery protect. The consumer unit and the Blue Smart charger, along with the fuse box, are all going to be located at the back end of the van. So I'm going to have to direct all the cabling for the lights, everything else to the back so I can get to it if any fuse blows, anything like that, it's really easy to get to. But yeah, everything else is going to be underneath the driver's seat and then towards the back end of the vehicle. We're going to have the switches somewhere in the middle, just next to the kitchen. So we're going to have the dimmer switch there, the other switch there, and then we're going to each have one of these on each side of the van so we can both ac access them quite easily. These switches, I'm gonna put one in the doorway on the slider door so that we can turn it on as we enter. I think there's gonna be one of those towards the front of the vehicle so we can turn everything off. A bit like a like a fail safe switch. So we can turn off the entire leisure battery electrics and then potentially another one on the tailgate because we're gonna have two of these lights on the tailgate. So yeah, I think that's everything. If there's anything we've missed, leave it in the comments, let us know, please, because we're gonna need some help. But yeah, other than that, if you wanna see how we get on, what's that? Oh, Alfie's just asked if you can subscribe to the channel. Is that, is that what he said? Yeah, he's definitely said you should subscribe to the channel to see how we get on when we come to install these lights. Also, ding the bell, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all those nice things, and then you'll see how we progress. I think Alfie would appreciate that as well. He might smile next time. Yeah, we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Ah, my knees, my legs are hurting from kneeling down. Don't pause it yet. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not finished. <laughs> I'm not finished. She wants to pause the video all the time. So, are you ready? Are you done? No, I'm not done. Sometimes I stammer and I don't say everything properly, so I need to retry. I can edit it later. No, People no. won't know. Yeah. People won't know, and I'm a lot quicker when I edit it because I cut it. Don't take me 25 minutes. So yeah, if you <laughs> You get excited! <laughs> oh, that's Alexa just giving you a wind! <laughs> so 
I'm going to... <laughs> right, so I'm going to end the video there. We're going to carry on the electrics in the next episode. <laughs> well, maybe not the next, the next episode, but in part two. So if you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see how we get on the next time we come to doing the electrics, follow, subscribe, leave, ring the bell, all those nice things. Yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, wait a minute. And thank you for watching. <laughs> and thank you for watching, yeah. Cheers. Right, now you can pause, now you can press the button. <laughs>